The grandson of Nelson Mandela has responded to claims from Meghan Markle that a South African performer told her her marriage to Prince Harry was rejoiced in the streets the same way as we did when Mandela was freed from prison. Now, he has responded by saying overcoming 60 years of apartheid is not the same as marrying a prince. So, were her comments ill-judged, Janet? I think um, she is on a journey. She does feel that she has been mistreated and misunderstood. But you can't get away from the fact that Nelson Mandela had been in prison for 27 years, who had devoted his entire life to ending apartheid and working on behalf of his people and people all over the world of all skin colours and minority groups and majority groups all celebrated when finally Nelson Mandela was released from prison. And I remember that day, I watched it on television and I cried. I just thought it was an unbelievable moment. So, you know, I, I, I think it was uh, knocked, although someone might have said it to her, was it a good idea to uh, repeat it. Um, I think the timing of all this is a little bit unfortunate. I think the Queen is uh, at Balmoral. We've just heard that she's not going to receive the new Prime Minister in London like she normally would. Uh, he or she will have to go up there. And I can't help feeling that this bomb barrage of stuff coming from Meghan and Harry is distracting uh, from the fact that, that the Queen is at a, a, a quite delicate stage of her reign. I, w I don't want to say any more than that. Kelly? Well, I think what Meg the point that Meghan was trying to make and not trying to speak for, for her is there is some commonality between apartheid being abolished and her marrying a prince. I mean, other than Queen Sophie Charlotte, that she's the first recognised woman of colour within the royal family. Um, and for us, as, as a as a culture and us as... So it was a moment. It was. It, yeah. it was a historical moment. Yeah. Um, in the same way that that was a historical moment. Um, we're not saying that they were comparable, but I'm saying there's definitely some commonality there where, for black people, that was a huge moment for us to go, wow, one of us in the royal family. Um, you know, she's, ha she's had to go through, you know, racism, she's had to go through all different things, and I think her speaking out is her right to do so. It's her truth and she has the right to speak it. Yeah, but there's some truths that in that interview that don't bear much inspection for reality. She said in the cut interview that one of the reasons uh, that she left the UK was that she wouldn't be able to do the school run because her children, her small children, will be hounded by press photographers. And that is just simply not the case. Uh, because there are very, very strict rules in place now rela uh, relating to access to the royal family and phot photography of children, not just of royals, but of famous people too. And you cannot photograph But her children. life wouldn't just be limited to the school run. She's talking about the negativity that's, that, are, that is put towards mm. black people of colour. And her son is a person of colour. So, yes, so she, he would be protected within that royal bubble. But outside of that, what would happen? And she's been seeing... Well, you seem firsthand. to be implying that the, that the British people, by default, would think less of her son and treat her... her there would be a large number of people who, by default, might think uh, badly of her son because he's a person of colour or mixed race. But that's her experience. She said within the royal household that people had made comments about her son's race. So if that's the first kind of, mm. you know, representation that she's had, what is she thinking about as, 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 as a community, as a wider community outside? Racism is something that we deal with on a daily basis. She didn't just leave because of that. She left because of her mental health. She left because she, she felt that um, what was happening within the establishment, within the royal household, she couldn't manage, she couldn't cope with. There's racism telling... in America as well, though, isn't Absolutely there? Absolutely, there's racism yeah. in America as well. But I think she, what she was saying within the interview, and if you read it, she was very much, you know, I, you know this journalist, um, uh, Alison P. Davis, th there's many comments where, where Megan has said within the interview, I said that within the Oprah Winfrey interview, mm. can we move on, please? Very sternly correcting and asking that journalist to move on. So, y y obviously, the journalist has done the job that, that they wanted to, that she wanted to do, do by... You think 
journalist had an agenda then that she was well, going in to I, get I certain facts it, out my of opinion Megan. is that the journalist walked in with an agenda. Her very first line but says, she invited crime, the journalist crime into conditions house, for a night know. of confession. That's not an, that's... no, but it, but the the nature of the beast. You're sitting here with two journalists. We're not puppets. So we go into a situation and we make our decision. I mean, and, I don't... and, and Megan would have had copy approval. Mm. I mean, there's no two ways about that. And what I find ironic is that she left this country because she complained of having her privacy invaded and she's crossed to the other, to another continent where now, in the space of a week, we've had two podcasts and a 6,000-word but interview. Within the, but within the confines of the royal family, she had her passport taken. She wasn't allowed to have she her own Instagram account. She did not have her passport. She, there, no. was, there were lots of things that she... Her, her, her they, own... they hold it on a file. Yes, absolutely, but you... Of... But if she could have walked in there and went, can I have my... She went to New York baby for a baby shower. She did not have her passport removed. She couldn't receive her own mail without somebody else reading it. <laughs> Those are, like, common things that you <laughs> like to have. I think, I think I'm not over. allowed to receive my mail on this show without <laughs> well, someone reading it for us. But, but <laughs> so if you're... Hang on a second. Yeah, no, no, wait. Yeah. So if you're yeah. away so from home... We're to weigh in on this. It's just so boring talking about Meghan Markle. But I get all the points raised. One thing I would say about these headlines that get pulled out or things that we're doing here is obviously pulling out stuff that's been said. It's a shame when she knows she's going to be scrutinised for everything she says, that she still says things like this that she knows will probably cause some sort of confusion and dis detract from potentially her agenda, which it sounds like obviously she's promoting her podcast, but other things that are more important to her, the reasons why she stepped out of a certain type of media scrutiny and wants to m manage her voice and manage her truth, as you say, and I think she should be given that freedom. But she should be aware of the fact that, you know, she says something like this and compares herself to Mandela. It's going to get scrutinised. But also it's getting scrutinised on the day when it's 25 years That's after... That's not her fault, though, is it? But, she, would she have known but, that? No. Yes, she would have known that releasing her podcast at the end of last week and yesterday would all coincide with 25 years after her husband's mother was brutally killed in an accident. The cover shot of the magazine is very reminiscent of the Patrick So you think she's being deliberate picture. about putting all this out at no, this no, point I, now? No, I don't. No, I... she hasn't got any control of when this... The, she's done this article at least, at least six weeks ahead of time before the article sure. was released. Yeah. She hasn't got control. I think she does have control to say, actually, do you know what, maybe we shouldn't put it out now because it is this time of year. Yeah, and I mean, it is I... this...